Hello, I'm DG Markwell with MyMax.com, and today we got a very special guest with us today. We have LPGA Hall of Fame golfer Pat Bradley, all the way from Cape Cod, Massachusetts. Welcome to Montgomery, Alabama. Thank Pat. you, DJ. It's beautiful here. I mean, I'm happy to be here. Great, great. This is Chamber of Commerce weather. Well, we've had such a good time with you the last two days here in Montgomery, and uh, and we thought it'd be good to give. Uh, uh, Central Alabama is a chance to uh, get to know you a little more and a little yeah. better and uh, I wanted to start off and talk a little bit about uh, how did you get started in golf? Pat? You know, uh, DJ, my dad was an avid golfer. In fact, my dad was a caddy with his brothers uh, around the Boston area when he was young and he fell in love with the game. He was an average player. I think his best handicap was probably about a 12. Uh, but he made a promise to himself that when he had children he was going to expose uh, his children to the game that he loved. Well, of course, you know, back in the uh, 70s, you know, it was all about football and basketball. And so, um, you know, they were highly involved. And, and I wanted a sport where I didn't need my brothers to play a game. I remember we were playing, you know, we would play touch football. And um, I was the hiker and the blocker. And my brothers, they were the glamour positions of quarterback and wide receiver. And I used to say to myself, what's wrong with this pitcher? So I gravitated to the game, and uh, I'm glad I did. I had a wonderful, um, you know, I went through the, the, the group lessons. Uh, the pro at our golf course, he saw that I had some, um, you know, potential, and he took a, a little bit of interest. And it kind of snowballed from there. But... Um, you know, my dad, you know, I, the exposure came from my dad. And then, of course, um, the members at my club that I was at, they all helped in, you know, bringing me along and, you know, uh, cheering me on and, and supporting me. So it just grew from there. But being from New England, you know, it was very difficult. Our seasons were short. Uh, I did ski in the wintertime. So uh, I used to get beat by a lot of the girls from California, from Texas, from Florida. But when I graduated from high school, you know, I made a decision. My dad and I, we talked it over and I went to college down in Florida. I graduated from uh, Florida International University. And then I went to uh, LPGA Qualifying School, which was right around the corner. And, uh, and lo and behold, it all worked out and I was on my way. Yeah, what was it like? Uh late 50s, early 60s when you were playing, you were probably the only girl out there Basically. with the guys. Uh, how yes. were you treated and how were you able to manage around that to, to, uh, to well, fine you know, tune your game? You, that's a very, that, it's a great observation. There weren't a lot of junior programs when I was growing up compared to the junior programs that are uh, at golf courses or within a city or within a state. The junior programs have grown. But I, I really counted on the members at my course to, you know, and encourage me to play. And I think that's how I got my competitive spirit. Because, I mean, I had to hold my own with these guys. Uh, you know, they weren't, uh, they weren't, you know, handing me, you know, a silver spoon. I had to hold my own and uh, I had to carry my own. Um, but, and then again, of course, now college programs are a lot stronger, uh, DG, than when I was in college. So um, the game has come a long way, and I'm happy to see that our young women today are getting more opportunities. They're getting better guidance. They're getting better instruction, and there's more opportunities for them. And now to be able to get a scholarship uh, to play a game that you love, that's, that, that's, that's big. Do you remember the first time you beat the guys for the first time? What was what was their reaction? Uh, they didn't. Uh, they didn't. Uh, they didn't uh, brag about it. <laughs> they. They. You know, we shook hands and then they. They made a quick exit. And uh, but I was celebrating. But uh, there wasn't a lot of celebrations. But um, I had to hold my own, and and that is how I think my competitive spirit. With five brothers, you know, you got to learn how to hold your own, or else. Um, You'll, uh, you'll end it back at the food chain. <laughs> you know, uh, in reading some of the uh, background material on you, Pat, uh, uh, I noticed that, uh, that there was a particular bond I picked up between you and your dad. Yes. Uh, and, uh, and if I remember correctly, did, he passed away before you were inducted in the Hall yes. of Fame. Yes, yes. Uh, 
T tell me a little bit about that bond and the influence yes. he had on you. And you know, uh, he gave me every opportunity, like most parents. They try very hard to give their children every opportunity, and that's what he did. Um, you know, he would drive me to the golf course uh, after school, and um, then he would pick me up late at night, you know, after he got through work or whatever. Um, he made sure that I had the best equipment uh, that I could, you know, um, that money could buy so I would have the best opportunity to do my best. So it was, uh, we, we spent a lot of time together on, on the golf course. We played together. Of course, you know, the, you, you remember, uh, you would hear people say, I remember, you know, I was with my dad and we used to say that putts for the U.S. Open. Well, that is very true because I remember doing that with my dad. And of course, my dad was alive to see me win the United States Women's Open in Chicago. So that was a, that was a thrill. But um, just to know that he loved the game and that I was following in his footsteps, uh, that was huge. It was the common denominator between the Bradleys. You know, my brothers, yes, they played football, they skied, they played basketball, but the common denominator was our golf. And that always brought us back together. No matter where we are in the country, the game of golf brings the Bradleys back together, and that, I think, is, is big. Funny Tess, do you remember the last round of golf you played with your dad? I do. Uh, we had a little uh, skins match up at the course that uh, I grew up on. And, um, you know, he took a little money out of my pocket, <laughs> uh, which was a lot of fun. But, um, you know, my dad, uh, he was my hero. And, uh, you know, he, he worked hard to make sure that, that his children had the very best of opportunities. You know, we've got some moms and dads that are tuning in watching this video uh, here on our website today. and. And uh, they've got daughters, mm -hmm. young daughters, and uh, they've thought about maybe they might have this gift of golf. Yes. Uh, as someone who's kind of gone through every stage and step of that, any words of wisdom for them on well, getting started and how to support them in a healthy way? Exactly. I mean, I think you know, you 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 know, don't try to push them in in anything. Let them let them find it on their own. But I, you know, my dad didn't push me, but he gave me good direction. You know, uh, the steering wheel was there, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't a forced steering wheel or a push. So, I mean, I, you know, he let me do my thing, but yet was always there to guide me and, and to help me. And there, as I say, uh, if, if your young daughter has potential and she looks like she's interested, then I, you know, I would get on the phone and try to find, you know, a, you know places where uh, she might be able to get some group lessons and try to carry it on from there. I, I know the, uh, the other one thing that was very important to me is I got good lessons in the beginning, hon, you know. So instead of work, you know, instead of getting bad habits and then having a hard time getting over them, I, I immediately found um, a, a, a teacher that, you know, gave me uh, simple guidance and simple concepts that um, started me off on the right foot.